Hey, welcome back to BetSquid. On this channel, we do math videos and simplifying education technologies for you. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing iPad apps for creating screencasts and educational videos. This is a great app and there is a series of apps that I want to share with you. So make sure you subscribe for all future videos. So let's just get into this then today. Today, the app that I want to share with you is a dose series. You can download it from the app store. Uh, we're just going to do the iPad alone. There are several templates that you can choose from. These are templates that I've created. When we get started, most videos on YouTube um, are 16 by nine. So we wanna choose the aspect ratio, 1920 by 1080. So let's click on that one there. What this allows you to do is create a platform, a whiteboard or a digital interactive screen here for you to do all your notes. Now. Let's start off by um, writing a title for our video. So maybe you're doing, I don't know, Fractions 101. Okay, you wanna introduce your students to fractions. So here's my title, this is what I've written here. There is a timeline that allows you to see your annotations. So if I scrub through this timeline, you can see what I've done on slide one. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna keep that as my first slide. I'm gonna add a second slide by pressing on that button. And now I can start my example. So I can change the fonts here, the color. Okay, I have a fountain pen, uh, a felt tip marker, a spray paint, I think a highlighter. I'm gonna stick with the felt tip pen and maybe choose a purple. So we're gonna be teaching simple addition. So we can just say addition of fractions, add the following fractions, two, six, plus three sixes, okay? And then you can just describe here to your students. I'm gonna choose red and I'm gonna say, we're gonna add, so add the numerator, that's five. And we're gonna keep the denominator the same. So, so we're gonna say five sixes. Now this is just a quick demonstration just to show you how to use the platform, okay? We can continue to add more slides here. So as long as you write on it, you can add another slide. Okay, let's go back. Uh, there is a timeline, of course, for all my annotations. Now, what's brilliant here is we can add stops to the animations. These are your controls for playing and pausing. So let's go back to the original slide through the timeline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play. So this is gonna play through until the end of the slide because I don't have any stops. Now, let's just say I'm waiting to have a stop after fractions. I can add a traffic light there. And so if I start from the beginning again, it's gonna stop at fractions. And if I press play again, it's gonna complete the rest of the slide. Now let's go to the second slide here, press play. It's gonna stop at addition. So it's gonna stop at add, sorry. And then it's gonna continue until my next traffic light. So let's just go forward here. Let's, or oh, I can scrub through the timeline as well. I'm gonna say, okay, so I want two sixes and I'm gonna create a traffic light. And I'm gonna say, this is addition, create a traffic light. And then three sixes, create a traffic light. And then I can pause here and say, oh, work it out for yourselves and then press play and then uh, I'll give you the solution. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a video, I'm gonna be creating a video asset, okay, by using this platform as a presentation tool. What's brilliant about it, it's just like PowerPoint or um, Google Slides or Apple, what do you call it? Apple Keynote, where you can click on the next animations. Here you're creating traffic lights, okay? So let's go ahead and see this. Let's play it through. Fractions, excellent, 101. And then it's gonna start say, hey, we're doing addition. Two sixes plus three sixes is equal to what? I'm gonna to talk to my students, what is it equal to? And then I'm gonna say two plus three, add the numerator, you get five. But you have to make sure that the denominator is the same. So keep it the same and you get five sixes. Okay, that's a very short demonstration on uh, the lesson. We're not learning fractions in this video. We're learning how can we create, using a screencast, uh, an educational video. Okay, so since my presentation is ready, I'm happy with that. What do I do next? Okay, you can see this little record button here. We're gonna use that to record the actual video. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna scrub right to the beginning. Uh, there are other features here. For example, I can add uh, I can take a picture or I can add for my library uh, a photo if I want, okay? So I don't know, maybe I just wanna bring this photo here. I can adjust the size and I can adjust the placement wherever I want. So for example, if I wanted to have this image, not that it relates to this lesson, but if I wanted to have an image, I can bring in an image. I can also change the background. So I use, I like to do um, 
a square grid background. So it keeps my notes in check, okay, it keeps them organized. And also it helps with the students watching the video, okay, to have a clear um, sort of structure to where they're looking on the screen. So you can choose whatever background you want. There's several backgrounds that they have here available. And you can also make custom backgrounds. You can go here and you can choose a custom background. I used to have this one here where I had my logo in the corner and I felt that it sort of just took up too much space. So I got rid of that. Um, you can use flat colors, okay, solid colors. I'm just gonna stick with a pattern. I'm gonna stick with this. What do I do now? I've chosen the background. I know that I can uh, add images. Can I edit images? Well, if you long press on it, it gives you the option to select. And then once I've selected it, I can move it around, okay? I can just start moving this around. So maybe I want it up here instead. You can pinch and zoom. Uh, that's really quite useful because you can really go into looking at detail. Maybe I want to shade in this square for some reason. Okay, it's easier for me to do that if I zoom in to the screen. And then if I go back out, you can see, you know, that I've got um, that little square colored in. What else can I do? Okay, let's go to the next slide here. Okay, fractions 101. Okay, here's slide two. Let's go on to slide three. I don't want this, I want to get rid of it. Now there's two options to get rid of this. Remember, everything is recorded on the timeline. So if I use the eraser tool, that's also going to get recorded on the timeline. Okay, so the eraser, the action of erasing isn't get recorded in the timeline. But here's the thing, I don't want to show that I'm erasing it, I just want to get rid of that line entirely. So what I can do is I can press the back button. So if I press back, that's got rid of the eraser. And now I can actually press back again to get rid of that line. Or there's another thing, what I could do is I could long press and then do a lasso over this that selects that particular item and then I can just cut it away, yeah? So let's cancel that. I'm gonna hold and then do a lasso over it and then cut it away. So now that's not registered. That uh, squiggle, okay, is not registered as an, as an annotation on this particular slide. I, I would suggest that play with the application. It's absolutely free. Doceri is free on the App Store. Download it. I've upgraded via an in-app purchase. It's very cheap just to get rid of the watermark that shows up in the corner. So if you want your videos to look a bit more professional and you want to get rid of the Doceri watermark, you can just buy an in-app purchase. Okay, purchases uh, and then basically get rid of this watermark. I, I, I think it's a, a dollar or two or something. What I want to do now is show you how we record to make an educational video. Okay, how does the screen cast actually work. So once my um, my presentation is ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the record button. Okay, I want to bring down my timeline because I still want access to my play button. When I'm recording, the timeline doesn't show. Just the screen, your presentation is going to show up. Okay, so as I press play, none of the timeline is going to uh, be recorded on the educational tutorial, just the, just the, the whiteboard. Uh, and of course, I need to have access to these tools in order to move back and forward through my presentation. One more thing that I want to show you is if I play, you can see that the animation is really fast. What if I want to slow down the animation? Okay, there is a speed ramp here where we can slow down the animation. Okay, so for example, if I put it all the way down to the left hand side and I play back this presentation, you can see it's creating the annotation really, really super slowly, isn't it? So let me just speed this up again. Whee! And you can manually adjust the speed ramp as you like, okay? I like to keep it as fast as possible, unless I'm showing a particular uh, graph or something and how I've drawn the graph, okay? So maybe if I draw, I'm gonna do a line here and another line. And now I wanna draw, for example, a curve or a particular function here. I, I want this curve to be really slow, okay? So I'm gonna go back, maybe create a traffic light here, and then boop, boop, create another traffic light, and then at the end of this, I'll create another traffic light. Now, I want the graph to be fast, but I want the actual line, my function, to be really slow. So what I can do is I can play, and you can see now that comes up really fast. I can slow down the speed ramp and now my actual line graph, my actual line, the function, is coming really slowly. So you can use speed ramp as well. That's the advantage of using this tool. Let's get to recording.
So I've scrubbed to the beginning of the presentation and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on record and start recording. Now, this recording is picking up both whatever's going on on screen, excluding uh, the tools and this timeline. Okay, so it doesn't record any of this. Uh, it just records this screen. Even if you pinch and zoom, it doesn't record that. It registers it at 100%, okay? Do I want it to pick up the audio from the internal mics? Maybe not. So I think, you know, just use a set of headphones uh, that have a mic input. That's quite useful. Okay, so if you plug this in, um, then it'll, and, and put them in your ears, then you'll pick up better audio. Okay, you'll pick up better audio. And make sure that your environment that you're recording in is controlled as well, okay? So there's no traffic going by, the AC maybe is turned off, uh, your fan or your leaf blower. I don't know why I said leaf blower, but um, yeah, no one's gardening or whatever. So for the most part, this is recording now. I can go here and I can pause the recording. Maybe I want to make an adjustment to my presentation. I found out that, oh, you know what? The, I didn't want that to be so slow. I can go speed it up and then I can go back and press play, okay? And now this time is going to pick it up quite fast, okay? So let's just stop that recording. What happens when I've gone through the whole presentation and I'm happy with it? The recording comes in a library of where all your recordings are. And then from here, you can go straight and upload it to YouTube. Give it a title. I'm just going to call it Fractions, okay? Uh, you can put in some tags if you want. It's nice to keep references to the applications that you're using because then other people are watching you who are watching your tutorial can go and see hey you know what they use doseri that's useful i can go and download that or you can reference them to this video and then you can put whatever here so i can say fractions 101 before you upload it to youtube you'll need to manage your shared services where do we do that from if you go to the cog here and go to manage shared services so come into here and log into your YouTube account. If you don't have a YouTube account, it's very simple and straightforward. It's free, by the way. Uh, all you need to do is, you probably do if you have a Gmail account, you just need to go in and sign in to your Gmail. So what if you don't wanna share it on YouTube? That's okay, you can share it on whatever platform you like. Just go to your recordings, and then go to my recordings. This is the library of your recordings. And then I could go ahead and share this elsewhere, okay? I can upload it to any one of these places. Now, sometimes I upload videos to my classroom or my drive. Um, if you have your Microsoft OneDrive installed, you can go and share it there, okay? I can just go ahead and save that video. If I go back to my Photos app, you see here that this video here is saved, okay? And from here, I can go ahead and share it when I'm ready, uh, wherever I want, whether it's classroom or whether it's OneDrive or whether it's G Drive, wherever you want to share it. That was a quick tutorial on how to use Dolceri on the iPad for doing screencasts and creating educational videos. I hope that was helpful and please subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.